right hello everyone welcome to my youtube channel in this video we are going to be looking at uh, the concept of rate of change under the applications of differential calculus okay so and then under this we are going to be looking at velocity and acceleration okay. meanwhile before that remember that if you have dy dx you recall that this is actually the same thing as rate of change of y with respect to x okay so now and our velocity which is v is actually written as uh, the rate of change of distance assuming s is representing our distance with respect to time so it's actually a part of rate of change okay so uh to whenever you are given a function for the distance you can find your velocity by taking the derivative of that distance with respect to time and then that gives you the velocity function and so if you are now asked to find the velocity at a given time so you just substitute your time all right there are three things to note if your velocity is does this derivative here is greater than zero then what it means is that your velocity is increasing and so you are moving away from your starting point assuming you have a starting point zero so it means the the object moving is moving away from it but if the velocity is less than zero that's negative it means that the object is moving closer to the starting point meaning it's moving closer to a velocity of zero and then if the velocity is exactly zero that's if this rate of change is exactly zero the implication is that the object making a motion is momentarily at rest all right okay so let's now look at uh, acceleration acceleration represented with a is actually equal to the rate of change of velocity with time and since our velocity another way you can calculate this since our velocity is the same thing as this we can substitute it here and so we're going to have v of dt and we replace our v with ds over dt and that is going to give us v squared s so this thing means differentiating s twice so if you are giving the s function you can actually use it to find the acceleration without getting the velocity just take the derivative two times and that gives you what you're looking for all right so just like we have under the derivative under our velocity if our a that's this derivative is greater than zero it means that uh, the velocity is increasing and so you have what we call acceleration okay but if your a is less than zero it means that it is decreasing so you have deceleration or what we call a retardation and then uh, finally if your rate of change is equal to zero then you have what you call a constant velocity so why i'm making mention of all this is that it can come to bear when we have problems to solve okay so quickly let's go to the examples we have the first example here says that the equation of a motion of motion of a particle a particle in motion or along a straight line is specified by this equation and so that we should find the velocity and acceleration of that particle after two seconds that means your time t is equal to two seconds if your x is measured in meters okay so since we are looking for velocity in the a part that means we are going to take the derivative of this with respect to x sorry with respect to t and if we do that we are going to get this is going to give us 30 t raised to power 5 okay so that is equal to our velocity v and so in case we now want to find that velocity at time t equal to 2 is going to be equal to 30 into 2 raised to power 5 okay so what's that going to give us it means that our v is equal to okay so if you do this subtraction you are going to get 870 and remember they said we should measure in meters and so and time is in seconds so that's meters per second and that's the solution to the a part and then the b part said we should find the acceleration and to find the acceleration all we need to do is to differentiate this again remember we said that your acceleration can actually be equal to 
the derivative of your distance function two times. Okay, so if we differentiate this again, we are going to have and then this one will turn to zero. Okay, so we need to now find the value of our acceleration at time t. So at time t equal to 2, we are going to have that our acceleration is and that is going to give us two. and okay, so if you do that subtraction, you are going to have 2256. So that means our acceleration is 2000. 256 and uh, in this case it is meters per second squared and that's the solution for the a part all right so we go to ex sorry for the b part so we go to example two example two here says that the distance function is also given and um, there is the movement started from a fixed point o and this is a distance function and we are asked to find the acceleration of the particle so like I said, in this case, it's only the distance that is given. So to get our acceleration, which is the A, we need to differentiate this distance two times. And so to do that, let's first of all take the first one. Let me remove this. And so, and that's going to give us, if we differentiate 24, we'll have zero. And then if we differentiate 10 T, we'll get T, then minus 40 T. That's for our velocity. So, which means that our A will now be the derivative of velocity with respect to time, which will give us, this will be zero. And so, we just have minus 40 meters per second squared. And that's just the solution for the A part. And so, if we go over to the B, the B now says that we should find the distance of the particle from that beginning point when the particle is momentarily at rest. And so recall what I said here, that when our, uh, uh, our particle is momentarily at rest, if your V, that's this derivative, is equal to zero. So that's what they expect you to use here. So we are going to, this is that derivative. So for this to be momentarily at rest, what it means is that dS over dt will be equal to zero. So this implies that 10 minus 40t must be equal to zero and if you solve this this will come over here so you have 40 t is equal to 10 and so t alone will give us 10 all over 40 dividing both sides by by 40 and so you have 1 all over 4 which is 0 0.25 so all we need to do now is to substitute this time t into the distance function and that will help us get the distance we are looking for and so Recall the distance function is, so all we need to do here is to substitute the t, and that is 24 plus 10 times 0 0.25, okay? So this is going to give us 24, and so when you do that addition, you will get 26.5, and when you subtract, you are going to have 25.25 as our solution remember it has to be in meters and that's the solution for that distance required okay so finally on this we'll take on this example now here this also a little, a little bit different from the previous two it says that the distance function is also given in this case and we are asked to find and it's on along a straight line we are asked to find the acceleration average acceleration between time t equal to 2 and t equal to 4. So what do they expect you to do here? That you should find the acceleration at t equal to 2 and that of t equal to 4 and then take the average of the two. So let's do that now. So we need to first of all find our acceleration and our velocity is actually equal to thus differentiating this which will give us and then what it means is that our a now will be equal to, if we differentiate this, we'll now get 60 minus 2. Okay, so at this point now, so our A at, two, at T equal to 2 is going to be equal to 6 times 2 minus 2, and that is equal to 10. Okay, so what about A at T equal to 4? That is going to give us 6 times 4 
which is equal to this is 24 minus 2 and that is 22 hence what it means is that our average is actually equal to 10 plus 22 all over 2 that's taking average and this is 32 divided by 2 which is 16 and uh, if we measure in meters so it means that uh, we are going to have 16 meters per second squared as our acceleration and then to get the b part b part says we should get the acceleration when the velocity is zero okay so when your velocity is zero it means that the whole of this is equal to zero so velocity equal to zero implies that so if you solve this quadratically you are going to get uh, the values of our t and when you get the values of our t then you now substitute into the acceleration function and that will give you the acceleration you need at v equal to zero okay so let's do that now and then if we factorize this we are going to have please kindly take time to do this and that's going to give us our t as positive one or minus one all over three but of course we know that our t cannot be negative so this will not be a part of it so that means we are going to make use of this and so if we substitute it into our acceleration now so what it means is that since our acceleration is 60 minus 2 so at a velocity 0 our t is equal to 1 so we'll have 6 times 1 minus 2 and that will give us 4 meters per second squared and that is the required solution all right and this is where we'll end it for this video kindly subscribe to our youtube channel and please like share and comment on our youtube videos and we'll see you in our next video bye